It may not seem obvious, but this combinational logic circuit has the same logic functionality as this two input OR gate. Obviously, the combinational logic circuit looks more complicated than the two input OR gate. In terms of the wiring, it is obviously more complicated. But there's another issue we need to concern ourselves with. The number of transistors needed to build the combinational logic circuit is many more than needed to build a two input OR gate. It is the goal of a designer to reduce the complexity of a combinational logic circuit and save on the number of logic gates that's needed to give the same functionality. Obviously reducing the number of gates reduces the number of transistors needed to build the functionality that we require. Many millions of transistors can be fabricated onto a piece of silicon. This is what gives us the central processing unit of modern computers. Reducing the number of transistors needed to give us the functionality within a central processing unit is best served by having as few transistors as possible, thus freeing up more space to gain extra types of functionality onto the piece of silicon. So knowing how to minimise logic circuits is a fundamental and important feature for designers of logic functionality circuits. The complexity of a combinational logic circuit is reduced by minimizing the Boolean expression that represents the combinational logic circuit. So for example, this Boolean expression here represents this particular combinational logic circuit. So if I can minimize this to something simpler, I can then derive the logic circuit from that simplified Boolean expression. So let's have a look at how we can minimize this particular Boolean expression. I am going to use knowledge of Boolean identities to minimize this Boolean expression here. Don't worry about the individual identities that I'm going to use. That's the purpose of this video and following videos. They're going to introduce you to the Boolean identities that you too will find useful when it comes to minimizing Boolean expressions. So I'm going to start here where I'm going to say f and f equals not a and b and that's going to be odd with. Now one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to look at this expression here and this one and I can see that that's got an a and this one has got an a now what I'm able to do here is this, I'm able to put the following in brackets using an identity which I'll refer to later. And in these brackets I now have a not B or a B. Now it is the case that a not B or a B in fact gives you a 1. Now I'll rewrite this expression out again. And now I have have A and, now if not B or B is in fact 1, I can say this is A and 1. Now it is the case that A and 1 can be replaced by A. So I can rewrite this again now as not A and B or A. If I have an A by itself here, it will knock out any not A's that are in other expressions and I end up with B or A. And you can rewrite that as A or B. Now A or B here we can see in fact is what we have up here for an OR gate. Because F is A or B for a two input OR gate. So if I've now managed to minimize this Boolean expression here which is the logic representation of this combinational logic circuit, then I've proved that in fact this combinational logic circuit can be replaced by a two input OR gate. Now I've introduced that by showing you some Boolean identities. The next video in this series is going to look at each of those identities in turn and we then have some skills and some tools to enable us to look at any Boolean expression and minimize it to something a lot simpler with the purpose of reducing the complexity of a combinational circuit to something simpler. 
Let's have a look at one example of an identity, and that is this one here. If I have f is not not a, then that's the same as saying f is a. Now let's explain why this is the case. Let's take a here, and let's remind ourselves what kind of circuit gives us not not a. Well, the answer is it's going to be a not gate followed by another NOT gate where the output will be F at this position here. Now, if A is appearing at the input of this gate then what will appear at the output here is NOT A because this NOT gate here will NOT the input. Now, of course, this NOT A now comes here and it goes to the input of this NOT gate and of course at this position here the NOT gate will NOT the NOT A. So F ends up being NOT NOT A. So how can I say that that is the same as A? Well, think of it in this way. If I've got an input here that is A, what value can that be? Well, it can take the value of a 0 or it can take the value of a 1. It can't take any other value. Remember we're dealing with two state devices here. So let's rewrite this circuit again. Here. So it's a not followed by a not. We'll not worry about the boolean now. But I am going to say I've got an A here and I've got an F there. And now I'm going to say let's put a 0 in here. So if I put a 0 in here, this NOT gate will change the 0 to a 1. And of course that 1 will now appear at the input to this gate. And of course this gate will change its input to the opposite, so it will change it to a 0. So we can see that when A was a 0, F was a 0. Well, let's come here now and let's say, well at this time let's put a 1 in here to the A. So a 1, when it goes through the NOT gate, will be a zero and of course that zero will come from the output of this gate to the input of this gate here and I'll get here a one. So we can see that when a was a one f in fact was also a one. So we can see that the output f is whatever a is because when a was a one the output was a one and when a was a zero the output was a zero. So we can legitimately say that F is therefore equal to A. Now as this circuit was proven a moment ago to be not not A, and I've just shown that it's also A, then obviously not not A can be A. You can think of that as two nots over any variable kind of cancel themselves out. Don't take that too literally. But that's what we can think of as they effectively cancel each other out. Which seems sensible because you knot it to its opposite, then you knot it back again. So you flip it a 0 to a 1, the 1 back to a 0. You flip a 1 to a 0, and the 0 back to a 1. So what you put at the input, A, will always appear at the output, F. Which means that F will always be whatever A is. Consequently... Not not A is the same as A. Now that's one example of an identity. Now it's usual to use truth tables to prove identities and we'll be doing that for other identities in the following videos. But this is an important one, that not not A will become an A. So let me leave you with this question here. What is not not C? Well the answer is C.